Within 24 hours of starting the keto diet, your liver begins cannibalizing itself to keep your brain alive. Today, I'll explain what really happens to your body on the keto diet like you're five years old. And by the end, you'll understand exactly why people either swear by it or feel like they've been hit by a truck. Sound dramatic? That's because it kind of is. Your body normally runs on glucose from carbohydrates. Every cell in your body knows how to use it efficiently. Your brain absolutely loves it, and your muscles can burn through it quickly when you need energy fast. But when you drastically cut carbs on keto, you're essentially cutting off your body's primary fuel source entirely. So what happens when your body's favorite fuel suddenly disappears? Panic mode. Your liver, which normally stores about 24 hours worth of glucose as glycogen, starts dumping its emergency reserves immediately. This is why many people lose several pounds in their first week on keto. It's not fat melting away dramatically, it's mostly water weight. Each gram of stored glycogen holds on to about 3 grams of water. So when that glycogen gets used up, all that water goes with it. But here's where things get interesting. After about 48 to 72 hours, your liver's glucose stores are completely depleted. Your brain, which normally consumes about 120 grams of glucose per day, is now staring at an empty tank. Since your brain can't survive without fuel, your liver has to get creative. It starts breaking down fat into molecules called ketones. The process is called ketogenesis. The three main ketones your liver produces are acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and acetone. Yes, acetone, like nail polish remover. This is why some people on keto develop fruity or metallic breath that could strip paint off walls. Your body is literally exhaling acetone through your lungs. During this transition period, usually lasting anywhere from three days to two weeks, many people experience what's euphemistically called the keto flu. This isn't actually the flu. You might experience headaches, fatigue, irritability, difficulty concentrating, and even mild nausea. Your brain is essentially learning to run on a completely different fuel system, and it's not happy about the change. Here's what's happening at the cellular level during this transition. Your brain cells are frantically trying to increase production of enzymes needed to process ketones efficiently. Meanwhile, your muscles are also adapting, becoming what scientists call fat-adapted. They're learning to burn fatty acids directly instead of relying on glucose. This process can take several weeks to months to fully complete which is why giving keto a few days doesn't really tell you how your body will respond long-term. Now, here's what most people don't talk about. Ketosis triggers a cascade of metabolic changes throughout your entire body. Your insulin levels drop dramatically, which is why keto can be effective for people with type 2 diabetes. Lower insulin levels signal your fat cells to start releasing stored fatty acids into your bloodstream, providing a steady stream of fuel for ketone production. For people with insulin resistance, this can be life-changing. For people with healthy insulin function, the benefits are less clear. Your kidneys also get involved in this metabolic makeover. They start excreting more sodium and water, which contributes to that initial rapid weight loss, but can also lead to dehydration and electrolyte imbalances if you're not careful. This is why keto enthusiasts often talk about the importance of supplementing with sodium, potassium, and magnesium. The fatigue and muscle cramps people experience during keto flu? Often just severe electrolyte depletion. Something fascinating happens to your hunger hormones too. Ketones appear to have appetite suppressing effects, and the high fat content of keto meals tends to increase satiety hormones like CCK and GLP-1. Many people report feeling less hungry on keto which can make it easier to maintain a caloric deficit for weight loss. This is one of keto's biggest selling points. You eat fewer calories without feeling like you're starving. Your sleep patterns might also change during the initial adaptation period. Some people report more vivid dreams or disrupted sleep during the first few weeks. This could be related to changes in neurotransmitter production, as your brain adapts to running on ketones instead of glucose. The good news is that many people report improved sleep quality once they're fully adapted, though the adjustment period can be rough. But here's the truth bomb nobody wants to hear. Being in ketosis doesn't necessarily speed up your metabolism. In fact, some studies suggest that metabolic rate might decrease slightly on very low-carb diets. The weight loss people experience on keto isn't because ketones are magic fat-burning molecules. It's because the appetite-suppressing effects and increased satiety often lead to spontaneous calorie reduction. You're just eating less without realizing it. Your body composition changes can be quite dramatic on keto, though. Because insulin levels remain low, your body becomes very efficient at accessing stored fat for energy. 
Many people report losing fat while maintaining muscle mass, especially if they're doing resistance training. However, your muscles will look noticeably smaller and flatter because they're not storing as much glycogen and water. Bodybuilders call this looking flat, and it's one reason why many athletes cycle in and out of keto rather than staying on it year-round. Performance changes are another aspect people don't always expect. During the initial weeks, many people experience decreased athletic performance, especially for high-intensity activities that rely heavily on glucose. Sprinting, heavy lifting, high-intensity interval training. All of these suffer on keto, at least initially. Once fat adapted, some endurance athletes report improved performance and better energy stability during long activities. Ultramarathoners and endurance cyclists sometimes swear by keto, but explosive, high-intensity performance often remains somewhat compromised because fat simply can't be converted to energy as quickly as glucose can. Your digestive system also undergoes significant changes. The dramatic increase in fat intake can initially cause digestive upset, including diarrhea or constipation. Your gallbladder has to work overtime to produce enough bile to digest all that fat. Some people develop gallstones, especially if they're losing weight rapidly. The gut microbiome also shifts dramatically with changes in bacterial populations that can affect everything from mood to immune function. We're only beginning to understand what these microbiome changes mean long term. Now here's something that'll surprise you. Blood markers often improve on keto, particularly for people who were metabolically unhealthy to begin with. Triglycerides typically drop, HDL cholesterol often increases, and blood pressure frequently improves. However, LDL cholesterol responses are highly individual. Some people see improvements, others see significant increases, and the clinical significance of these changes is still being debated in the scientific community. If you have a family history of heart disease, getting regular blood work on keto isn't optional, it's essential. One of the most interesting effects of long-term ketosis is something called metabolic flexibility. People who have been on keto for extended periods often develop an enhanced ability to switch between burning fat and glucose, depending on availability. Your body essentially becomes more efficient at using whatever fuel is available, which could have benefits even if you eventually reintroduce carbohydrates. Your liver deserves special mention here because it's working incredibly hard during ketosis. Not only is it producing ketones around the clock, but it's also handling increased fat metabolism. For most healthy people, this isn't problematic, but people with existing liver conditions should approach keto with caution and medical supervision. There are documented cases of people developing liver problems on very high-fat diets, though they're relatively rare. The neurological effects of ketosis extend beyond just fueling the brain differently. Some research suggests that ketones might have neuroprotective properties, which is why ketogenic diets are being studied for conditions like epilepsy, Alzheimer's disease, and Parkinson's disease. For children with drug-resistant epilepsy, keto can reduce seizure frequency by 50% or more. That's not a lifestyle choice. That's legitimate medical treatment. The brain seems to run quite efficiently on ketones once adapted, and some people report improved mental clarity and focus, though the scientific evidence for this in healthy adults is mixed. However, it's important to understand that ketosis is essentially a survival mechanism. Your body evolved the ability to produce ketones to keep you alive during periods of food scarcity or when carbohydrates weren't available. While this can be beneficial for weight loss and certain health conditions, it's not necessarily the optimal state for everyone all the time. We didn't evolve to be in permanent ketosis. We evolved the ability to enter ketosis when food was scarce. The social and psychological aspects of keto can't be ignored either. The restrictive nature of the diet can make social eating challenging. Birthday cake? Can't have it. Pizza night with friends? You're eating the toppings off your slice. Holiday meals? You're navigating a minefield of carbs while everyone else enjoys themselves. Some people handle this fine. Others develop an unhealthy relationship with carbohydrates, viewing them as inherently bad. And let's address the elephant in the room. Sustainability. Most people can't stick with keto long term. The restriction is intense, the social challenges are real, and many people simply miss carbohydrates too much to maintain the diet indefinitely. Studies show that most people regain weight after stopping keto, not because keto damaged their metabolism, but because they returned to the same eating habits that caused weight gain in the first place. There's also the question of what healthy keto actually looks like. You can technically stay in ketosis eating nothing but bacon, butter, and diet soda. 
That'll keep you in ketosis, but it's nutritionally bankrupt. The healthiest versions of keto emphasize vegetables, nuts, seeds, fatty fish, and high-quality fats. But many people gravitate toward processed meats, cheese, and low-carb junk food because they're easier and more satisfying in the short term. The keto diet essentially forces your body into an alternative metabolic state, where your liver It's not magic, it's not a miracle cure, and it's definitely not easy. It's a metabolic adaptation that works well for some people and terribly for others. For people with insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, or certain neurological conditions, keto can be genuinely therapeutic. For people looking to lose weight, it's one tool among many. No better or worse than other approaches that create a calorie deficit. For healthy, active people who perform well on carbohydrates, there's no compelling reason to switch. So here's my question for you. Knowing everything that happens to your body on keto, the good and the bad, do you think the benefits outweigh the challenges? Or is keto just another diet trend that's been overhyped by influencers selling expensive supplements and meal plans? Drop your honest take below, especially if you've tried it and either loved it or hated it.